what's up everybody this is jen with mouthful thank you again for tuning in with us again um, for another episode do not forget to get your boxes with a taste of culture uh all black on spirits wines bourbon whiskey whatever you want do not forget that and i am so excited today uh, we have some special guests um co-hosting with us um they are from the podcast don't take it personal um so please introduce yourselves guys uh, <laughs> hey, they will pop it off uh, <laughs> my name is uh joshua wilson but i go by jay will i'm hollywood cash and I go by Hollywood Cash. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Norm D. I go by Norm, though. Okay, now. All right, all right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, um, Star couldn't be with us. She's celebrating her marriage. She wasn't able to do that. Hey. So much love for her and celebration for her in that situation. That's nice good. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and get it started with the small business seg segment. Um, we have... Shavalia, I have to make sure that's her name because I don't know. It's Shavalia of Pink Mahogany Fragrances uh, that'll be joining us today. Shavalia, it's very unique. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Let me rotate. Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us. I was about to say, turn your camera. Right, right. <laughs> All right, before we get too far into it, I want to make sure that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Chevalier. Chevalier. Thank yes, you again sir. for joining us, Chevalier um, of Pink Mahogany Fragrances. So we just want to ask you a few questions to get to know a little bit about you and what you do. Um, so I do want to start by asking, tell us a little bit about your business. Awesome. Uh, well, Pink Mahogany, I always like to start with what the name means because just hearing pink mahogany, one may not necessarily relate that to fragrance. Um, I chose the, the word pink because it represents the feminine aspect of fragrance and the mahogany represents the more masculine side of fragrance, but it has an extra H on purpose uh, that's capitalized. And that extra H just means that it's fragrances for both him and her. So uh, I wanted to, to put that out there first. Good, because that was going to be one of my questions, if you had men fragrances too. <laughs> um, so how long have you been in business? Um, I've actually been in business since 2005. However, from about 2005 to 2008 or nine was really just research for me because I'm self-taught 100%. Um, so I wanted to learn everything that I could about fragrance. And in doing that, it took a pretty long time because I didn't go to necessarily a, a, a trade school or a school of perfume. So from 2005 to 2008 or nine was just research. Um, I, but I launched my first fragrance in 2011. So Inception was 2005, but the actual product, first product didn't launch until 2011. That's dope. So you've been doing it for a minute. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, as far as fragrances and um, like what inspired you to get into making your own fragrance? Um, it was a couple of things. One of them, um, I'm a certified teacher, um, elementary childhood through 12th grade music. And, you know, teachers have to go to a lot of meetings, a lot of different events on campus and off campus. So one of the things that always came up in conversation, aside from education and, and you know, challenges with students and how, they could, how, how we could improve um, their overall learning curve in education was fragrance. Whether it's some, someone was wearing something that smelled good or um, we just got to talking about maybe an aroma that we smelled if there were um, food available or something like that. But one of the challenges that kept coming up, no matter where the conversation was or what venue I was at, was there was always someone that had an issue with wearing fragrance. Maybe they used to wear it and then it got to a point where they couldn't wear it anymore due to uh, they just felt like maybe the fragrance or the formula changed and or they developed sensitivities. And it got kind of um, serious, like some people were having headaches or even nausea or um, like skin irritation. And me no being a researcher, yeah, me being a researcher, really at heart, I wanted to know why that was a, a problem. 
So I started researching about different ingredients and it was just a simple Google search, like uh, what ingredients and fragrance cause bad reactions. And this one particular term um, called a phthalate, but it's spelled with a PH, that kept coming up. And I was like, what is this? Because the spelling is really weird. So I started researching phthalates and what I found was quite disturbing. So that was uh, one aspect of, of me wanting to launch a brand. I really didn't want it. I didn't have any uh, a huge vision of it being real big. I just wanted to provide some small solutions to my friends and family who were some of the people that were complaining. But then I ended up having my own um, situation with a plug-in where it started causing adverse reactions for me. So when it hit home, it hit different. So I was like, okay, I'm going to really have to do something here because now this is affecting me and my health. So I wanted to provide fragrances for the home and for the skin for people who are sensitive. However, I don't say that my fragrances are all natural. I don't, co I don't coin any of those terms other than I do make a conscious effort to eliminate phthalates from my fragrance. So those were the two things that led me to wanting to create. Yeah, and thinking of a fragrance, I would have never even thought about like different allergies and skin irritations because I've I don't I'm not a very sensitive person to stuff like that, so it, mm -hmm. it never would have thought it crossed my mind that that would be an issue. You know what I mean? So it's right. good that you did your research to figure out why this is happening and then provided a solution to that. Because why look it up if you're not going to provide a solution? Right, right. So um, I do have a question about like how did you how were you affected, if at all, by the pandemic? Um, it was twofold. On one hand, like when the pandemic first hit, because I am a Black-owned business and I'm in a field that is not highly represented of melanin field individuals, I received a lot of press early on, like within the first couple of months after us being in, in quarantine. So on one hand, it was like really great because I was getting a lot of um, recognition as being a Black perfumer, especially a female perfumer, which is even more rare from Texas, which makes it even more rare. But then after I started growing in such a short amount of time and I was purchasing supplies quicker than I had ever purchased supplies before, the challenge that I ran into was my suppliers were now out. And I'm like, you all are a full-fledged manufacturer. How are you out of supplies? So not only did it affect me, but it, it affected the suppliers that I use, and I'm still being affected to this day, which in turn, you know, there are a lot of domino effect situations that can occur. One of them in my case is delays in shipping. And I know we hate to have delays when we order something. We, we expect it, especially if it says priority, we expect it within a certain time frame. So I've yeah. had to pivot and kind of adjust my shipping times and be transparent, even though we know that we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but still being transparent and saying, hey, my shipping times will be slightly longer due to A, B, and C. I don't just say the shipping times are, are longer. I try to be as transparent as possible so that they know that I'm affected, but in more than, than one way, so yeah. All right, so I have one last question for you. Oh, if there question was, after you. I was gonna say, and if anybody else have a question after that, then y'all are more than welcome to do so. Um, so I said, uh, my question is, if there is anything that you would do differently starting your business um, and being a business and building that business that could help the next person that is also trying to do the same thing, starting a business, like what would you, what advice would you give to them? Um, in general, or they're wanting to start a business in fragrance? In, in wanting to start a business like okay. in the beginning a lot of people don't have the skill sets or you know the educational background to start a business mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's just they just know that it's something that they wanted to do so that leads to a lot of trial and error so right. in that you know in growing that business like what mistakes did you make that you can kind of give advice to them to avoid those same mistakes right um i would say definitely to read and research and not rush the process um, you know, all of the legalities as far as protecting the name and doing those things will come, but just getting more information, as much information as, as you can about the type of business that you want, whether it be subscribing to uh, some articles, which most of them Without are free. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> Y'all know I got kids in the back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I do too. I'm a mother too, so I get it. I get it. Um, but but just 
trying to immerse yourself in your field or whatever the business is in, not necessarily to copycat off of the businesses that are already available, but if you see some that are, that are uh, successful, then figuring out what makes them successful by following them on social media, by looking at what they're posting and just taking it one day at a time and not trying to rush yourself to completion, so to speak. So someone that is just starting out, I would definitely say immerse yourself in that field of business that you're wanting to go into. Start there and don't, don't rush it at all because things will come. You will get inspiration for the next step. And I think that's one thing that I did was at first I kind of skipped steps because I wanted to push the product, but the marketing was not there. So just making sure that you take your time and um, really getting that business plan together. Because if you have the, uh, the vision of growing, then the way to do that is you gotta have a business plan so you know where you want that business to be. Even if it's, if it's a small goal, it'll change over time, but just not rushing the process and immersing yourself in, in the field of business that you wanna go into. Okay. I always love that question because there's always a different answer. Like mm-hmm. everybody has a different answer. And it's like, whoever watches the show, like they can get bits and pieces from everybody's answers and kind of, you know, collect that and, you know, do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have one more question. What's your best selling? What, what, what milkshake bring out of what to the yard? What's your best? What's your best <laughs> It's funny that you use the term milkshake because I do actually have a fragrance that people kind of correlate it to a milkshake just because it has a creamy vibe to it. And it's actually for both men and women. It's called Tandem. That is my top seller in, in all sizes. Yes, ma'am. So you said milkshake. So Tandem would be the milkshake. I don't know if I, how I feel about this. Somebody walked past me and they smell like spoiled milk. I'm just like, no. No, no, no. It's not, it's not spoiled now. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> you smell like a McFlurry. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite McFlurry. It has a it has a more mature vibe. You know, you know that's why we can't take this. Why we can't take that. I was just anyway. I was just uh, asking the question. Chevalier, Chevalier, how 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 can we find you? Let us know that. Absolutely. Uh, I am very active on social media. I am on Instagram under the name PM underscore fragrances. I do also have a personal page simply because I'm a mother and it is private, but I do uh, post. I'm a musician as well. So I post my music as well as fragrance. I kind of try to blend the two. So if there, if you're interested in learning more about me as an individual, PM underscore fragrances will actually take you to my personal page without giving the long name. So it's in my bio. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's all the questions that I have. Unless anyone else has any questions, like I say, the floor is open for you to ask. Um, But if not, that's all we have for our uh, small business segment today. Um, And again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you be blessed and much success to you and your business and your brand. Um, Keep doing it. I I love to see you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for having me. It was uh, definitely a pleasure. Thank you. And if you want to be a guest on our show and promote your business, please, please, please send us an email to mouthful at novativeent.com. That's N-O-V-A-T-I-V-E-E-N-T.com. And make sure you join us for Small Business Tuesdays every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on our Instagram Live and on our Facebook page as well. So just join us and promote your business. We love supporting our people. We have to support our people. So we're going to continue to do this every week, twice a week, basically Sunday when we record and Tuesday on our live. So make sure you take that opportunity to promote your business or brand. And so now we're going to get started with the topic. Right, Jen, what are we talking about today? Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, y'all. So let's just get into it. Okay. So, um, and I, and I had to kind of ponder on it a little bit. When do you know you're ready for, for marriage? When do you know? How do you know what you know? How? What's going on? Um, for me, um, if I can start for me, um, I'm not ready, honestly. So I would say when I when I am ready, it, it'd be somebody that 
it'd be somebody that I, I have all the patience for, all the patience for. Because I think in a marriage, it takes a lot of patience because I like to be around people a lot, especially mm-hmm. like, uh, <laughs> I don't like to be um, the relationship I thing. See I try, this is right. the thing. I tried the relationship thing and I figured out like, get off me. <laughs> get off me, you know. But and you just got to find just, somebody to keep that same energy. Like somebody that don't like to be touched too. Like I, I believe there's somebody out there like that. <laughs> I like to be touched sometimes. <laughs> what you say? You say something, Jay Will. I said, no, he's right. There's, <laughs> there's, there's all different kinds of people out there. One thing that Cass says quite a bit on our show is instead of trying to change someone to think and feel like you, find someone who's already there. Facts. Now, it may take you more time to find that person, but they're there. But the thing, the thing is, they say opposites attract. So that kind of, I don't know if that's really true. So when you do, quote unquote, find that person, and y'all are the same, like, don't they be bored? It depends. But okay, so like you have to pick one. Pick a struggle. <laughs> but, but also, you know what I think too? I think um every person is a case by case basis. Opposites That's... may attract for some people, but for some people, it may work to find their com- like they're someone who they're right in line with. It just depends on what works for you. Not everybody works the same. Yeah, that's true. Because anytime Whenever we use like conventional wisdom, we'll say stuff like like you just said. You were like, uh, they say opposites attract. Like, who are they though? Like, are they right. happy? Are they, you know, like they say a lot of shit. You know? Say, <laughs> touche. <laughs> touche. Yeah, we don't run into too many people who are we don't run into very many people who are in super healthy, happy relationships. Right. Yeah, everybody got relationship advice. Right. So I would say it just depends from person to person. I think sometimes opposites attract. I think sometimes two similar people will attract. I, I really don't think it's any rules to it, really. Okay, you got a point. Mm. And, and, and I agree with the whole, you know, opposites attract cliche situation, because I don't think it has to be either or. We just have to have a, a connection in some sense to kind of build from there. Because in order for me to get to the point of where I say I want to marry this person, I need I really need to know every aspect of you. Because I don't want to be finding nothing out and we don't already sign this paper. You know what I'm saying? So I need somebody that's, that's 100, people... 100% transparent before we even get to that point. So a lot of people will argue moving in before marriage no i need to live with you and before even we even do that i need to know that you have lived by yourself because i don't i don't need no you had a roommate you know moved out your mama house you moved with a roommate you still splitting bills i need to see you pay every penny by yourself, by yourself. Before i decide to get into a whole marriage with you you know what i'm saying because that those are the two biggest things communication and finances that those are the biggest arguments in relationships of course the inf- infidelity all that but you know what i'm saying not everybody's gonna have that argument about infidelity and all that extra petty stuff finances and communication is the biggest thing in, commu- in in marriages so if we can't do that if i can't see you paying every penny of your bills by yourself no it ain't gonna work now, I, okay, I, 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 I agree with that. I think that's, I agree with that as well. But one thing I want to touch on, something that you said, Desmond, um, you need to know everything before you get a marriage. I'm, I'm, I'm under the belief that you may know somebody completely before you get married, but five, 10 years in, that person's more than likely going to change. Like their wants are going to change, their desires are going to change, who they are is going to evolve. So you can't really bank on the fact that you know everything about somebody before getting into a marriage because that person's going to change. Like, and I think I think what helps with that is learning to evolve with them. Yes. Absolutely. Cuz and cuz growing apart is definitely a thing. And so right. I I um I I can agree with that 100%, but before we even get to the point of growing old, right? I need to know who you are now for me to kind of see what's your mindset and you know what i'm saying there's certain factors that might 
make it go off the deep end. But if I know enough about you now, I can kind of see the person that you're going to grow into. And no, I, I, agree I, agree that. That. I agree with that too. I mean, I tell people all the time, I've had an argument with a friend of mine not too long ago. She was like, you know, people change. And I was like, yeah, but a scumbag is always going to be a scumbag. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. So, yeah. so if someone like, that foundation is already set. Like that is not right. going to change. That is so true. That is very true, but then I know I'm not for the Mary's comeback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's the flag for me. That's the cutoff. So I can't say that you was a scumbag and I made the decision and now you pissed off because you married to a scumbag. Like you already knew right. that. So absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why you really got to learn people's core values because we change. Yeah. But we got some of the same core values we've had forever. Need that foundation. 40, 50 years old. Like if you're not a, if you, if you a shysty person, you probably going to be shysty to the day you die. Mm-hmm. For the most part, unless something. Oh, poo shysty? <laughs> yeah, poo shysty. Yeah. You're going to be poo shysty until the day you die. If you a liar, you probably, and I, I, I know people don't like that because they like, you, you do want to leave room for change. But the reality is we change, we evolve a lot, but our core values do not evolve very much. The all. same stuff at 16 that I believed in, I still you believe like, now. I believe in. I don't steal from people. I don't, you know, like these are things that are never gonna change. So right. that's really what I look at. How do you how do you interact with your 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 friends? Are you willing to because I always I look at how a nigga interact with somebody else, even in my friendship more than how you interact with me. I want to know how my partner, how would she do? Do she steal from my homegirls? Do she undercut her homegirls? Do she, you know, some people will let that slide. <laughs> they'll look at, they'll say, well, he, he'll never steal from me. Uh, she would never do that to me. No. I really believe, I believe it eventually is. work its way around to you. I'm not going to lie. Jen's facial reactions is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you be stealing Jen. <laughs> Let me she find say no. Don't play with me. <laughs> Don't play with me. No, I do not steal. Okay. Oh, okay, we're waiting on the answer. Don't play with me. <laughs> Wait up. <laughs> Never get Nah, it. you quiet over there. When you know you're ready for me. I'll be stealing for sure. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing a couple things over there. <laughs> nah, it's just really whenever I'm ready for a family. That's when I'll know I'm ready for it. Okay. I think, you know, Simple. I mean, to answer the question, you know, I, just, I guess out of the three of us, I was the closest one to it at one point in time. For sure. <laughs> I think I remember that. Yeah, I, I was the closest one to it at one point in time. I think for me, because I definitely I definitely thought that a girl that I was with at one point in time was going to be the one I was going to marry. Now wait, so which, now listen. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I was about to say, is she really about to ask that? <laughs> listen, I, li- I, li- I listen to the show, so I get to ask a little quick. I, like, I'll be on it. You know I'll be on it. Yeah, yeah, I know you know. I know you on it. Um, but I would say what made me think what made me think that I was ready for with that particular person was um, two things. Um, I think finding someone that wants you to succeed just as much as you want to succeed and vice versa. And someone, when you look into your future and you can't see yourself living without them. Oh, just. (laughs) 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 I'm the hopeless hopeless romantic of the crew, so. (laughs) Ain't ain't no wrong with that. Ain't no wrong with that. That's his superpower. That's his superpower. He's a a hopeless romantic? That's the superpower? It's a lot of niggas who not romantic. Or they have to learn that. Like, um, I've had you to know, learn. you are right. Hey, Jennifer, you, you asked right. that like it was a negative thing. Like, that's a superpower. Like, what's wrong with it? Nah, I, I'm gonna be real with you. I've been I think that, I, I think. Go ahead, Jay. Well, my bad. I, I've, I've been told I can teach classes on romance. I can teach some niggas some things. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't I'm gonna sign up. <laughs> what you say? You gonna? Oh, you gonna I'm gonna sign up for classes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no, <go ahead. laughs> some people got the skill off top, and some people have to learn it. Over time, I've learned that about myself. There's certain stuff I have to cultivate. I have to become. I had to become. Yeah, listen. Jeez. Listen to that. <laughs> it's a struggle, but I'm working. That's the thing. I'm working. You progress. are. You I'm, are such. You. You know what? I. I do have to commend you for that. You are. 
a work in progress. And, and I love to see it. I love your growth. I love who you are becoming. That's my dog, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> now, for real, for real. You know what's wild? This this is uncomfortable because Jen knows us way too well. <laughs> she does. She does. She got a cheat code. She, she does. does. She <laughs> Nah, I, I'm not familiar now, with Now she got a cheat code. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, he said you got a cheat code. Yeah, I don't have a cheat code. Y'all <laughs> no, put yourself out there. We all got the cheat code. Y'all put yourself yeah. out there. True. <laughs> I don't so, know. I think yeah, mine's, mine's, I kind of know, like, once, and it's like a kind of a simple, this is a niggerish rule, but I feel like the day that, once your homeboys call you and say, yo, it's some hoes over here, and you don't <laughs> care, <laughs> And you don't care because the girl you're kicking it with is is that fire? Am I lying? Hey that's man, a, that I, is I that was, that's when I would know. Like literally, if my partner say, "Hey man, pull up to the spot. We got some hoes over here," and I'm literally <laughs> kicking it with somebody that I like so much that I just eh, I don't even care. I think that's how I really would know that that's that's for me. So question: So would that be? Would there be a difference in that same conversation being me and my partner's just over here chilling, smoking, doing whatever? Would that be the same? Like, uh, well, situation? I, wanna, I ain't gonna lie. One thing I don't, I'm not one of them dudes that like is always, I don't wanna be around niggas all day either. So, like, I'm, if my partner's called me and asked me to ask me to smoke and I choose hanging with a chick over that, that's not really necessarily. It don't hold as much weight because I would rather hang with I would rather hang with female company over male company. Keeping it one thousand, I love my bros too, but I would rather hang with uh, I would rather hang with women than dudes if I have an option. You know what I mean? If right. I choose to hang with this girl that I've been hanging with over some new chicks, that means that I'm enjoying the company of this one more so than that's how I would know. For me, that's how I literally would know. I'm like, damn, I like her company more than. Cause that's what matters to me most. Like it's company. Do I enjoy your company? Can I be around you and not be super annoyed or, you know, going to one of, I'm my only child. I got only child syndrome. Sometimes I'm like, me you know, you like well. yep. but if I enjoy your company enough to where I get over that and I want to be around you, you know, uh, more often that typically means it's some, it's something. But that's real though. Like, I feel that that's real. Cause it's not, not everybody can do that or say that, you know what I mean? So it's just like, once you've made up in your mind, like you rather start transitioning to this person, like spending more of your time with this person than a group of people, like that's real. That's how it so is there any, when, when the topic of marriage comes up, like, is there any fear and whatever you feeling in that moment about marriage, is there any fear in that? All the time. Every time. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really, there's not many, I, I, there's not really any aspects of my life that I operate in fear in. I'm not afraid of marriage. I'm not afraid of getting into marriage. Um, but I will say I'm very cautious. You know, I take my time and I make sure I do my due diligence of sure. who I spend my time with. Now, I've been tricked a few times. We all have, you know. <laughs> so, so you think you with somebody that's really for you and then you find out they really ain't evolved that with that. That's human nature. You deal with that sure. relationship. So um <laughs> okay. and, and, and I say and I'll say this, um, I also don't like the idea of holding what someone has done to you against the next person. So I never do that either. But uh but see go ahead, go ahead. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> but I but I will say this, um I think what you should do is learn from it and attribute it as far as like, you know, taking your time with the next person to really get to know them as opposed to thinking you know them. Um, so I don't, I, so I'm not afraid of marriage. I just, I'm more cautious about who I enter it with because I only want to get married once. Not for Two, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think, you know what? And the thing is our generation, we are so much more cautious of that of marriage like we don't we're not playing with y'all you're gonna treat me right you can be out the bell i'm not gonna play with you you know I, I have i think i have one friend that's married like there are a lot of us who are not married Neither, none of us are married here on this panel tonight 
and it's just I feel like we're we're and I and I love it and, and not I am fucking terrified of marriage okay I'm terrified of marriage but I know when the time is I, I'm not opposed to it but I'm not I don't give a damn what situation I'm in y'all already know my situation I'm a single mom with two kids like I'm still not rushing into it because I need help with the kids or whatever the case may be like I'm not rushing into it and I think our generation is a little more smarter but then again our generation has so much more resources to be able to take our time and you know we we um we pour into ourselves more and we love ourselves we you know we we know what the hell we gonna fool with and what we not gonna fool with so so, so Jen, what what and I'm sorry to cut you off but what terrifies you about marriage what specifically instills so that so fear scary. in you I have a theory. Can I have a, can, can I, can I, can I ask you? Sure. If, if, I'm curious. Cause I, I hang with a, I, hang, I have a lot of friends that are single mothers. So I'm curious. Is the fact that kids would be involved is what terrifies you so much? Uh-uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm cur- I'm cur- cur- so cause, explain. Cause, cause at the end of the day, you, cause you already know what that is. Cause you, cause you already know. Cause whoever, you, you already know what I come with, you know, but um, at the end of the day, like, I come first and, like, from just my experience, I've never been put first, you know, so when I, when someone, like, really does just put me at number one, no matter what it is, then, okay, maybe we can Okay, let's move forward a little bit. Because I'm I'm afraid of relationships right now. I'm afraid of, like, yes. I'm afraid of all of that. Like, and, and the thing is, I'm cool. Like, I, and, and, and maybe it's because, like, like my, my 20s were, like, taken. Okay. My 20s were taken. So I'm at the point now to where it's like, okay, I'm getting to know myself more. Even, you know, even with my... my it's not a situation. Oh my God, kids. I love them babies, okay? It's just, even with that, I, I'm just not, I'm not in a rush. Whenever so it happens, is it a it fear of, like, disappointment? Is it a fear of... It's not a fear of disappointment. It's just, I'm loving on, I, like, I, I really like me and my mm-hmm. You just want to love on yourself. I love you. it. I love it. If somebody comes in, which I get that, but they're still not telling me why you're afraid to get me. Why am I afraid? Cause yeah. <laughs> like you, like oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Like one person, and it's like billions of people, like for the rest of your life. That's okay. Now I mean, I think we're, I think we're spoiled for choice now. That's why a lot of people are. We say, yeah, we're, we're. Um, doing things like loving on ourselves a little bit more, but I think we're honestly spoiled for choice. So it's hard to make a decision or consolidate on one person because it is. every other day we're seeing, I mean, he's or she's X, Y, and Z, but she got this and she's that. So it's like, how do you choose? It's so I think lie. that's kind of like another thing that scares people. Like, I don't want to make the wrong decision. Even yourself, Desmond, you were talking about have, knowing someone through and through, but you really can't mitigate risk when it comes to marriage. Cause even if you know, you can literally have watched this person for 40 years. You, there's no way you can predict, predict what they're doing at year 41. So you really can't prevent that. It's like, I think we have to get to the point where we're just comfortable with being uncomfortable in these relationships. And like, hey, it's uh, it's going to be work. That's all. That's how I feel about I it. Had, I have. I, I actually had one. That's it. Like, I knew. But other than that, I'm just like, mm. And then, like, I don't say this before. Maybe I should have been that block on the time. That's a great follow-up question. So you said you were you had one that you've I assume you were saying that was a person you felt like you could marry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a good question for everybody here. I know Jay Will, you said that you was close to it. So Nam and Cash, like, is there has there been a person you thought about? Hell no. Never. Never? <laughs> I love it. I love, I love it. it. I love it. You know, so I, I, love I, it. I just never gotten that deep. Like, I'm a real insulate. Like, I've always been insulated. I always, I hang with the same niggas. I hang around the same people. I like, 
I'm really insulated. That's why I haven't had, I'm not jaded. You know how some people are like anti-trust, they can't trust nobody. Uh-huh. They want I don't have that because my, my crew has never tried to rob me or <laughs> mess with a girl that I liked. Like I haven't ran into that because I've been around the same kind of circle of people. And mm-hmm. I've always had like a wall to kind of block a certain level of outside people out. So I haven't gotten that far to the point where I like, oh, I love, and I've met some like really dope. I don't have that many bad experiences with women. I ain't had that many. Because you a real nigga. Look at her. I'm pointing at her right (laughs) there. (laughs) But I I legit, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't don't have like these crazy negative experiences. It's really been me. It's just really lowering my wall, living in a world where like you can expose yourself a little bit. Cause I'm never just overly exposed in that way. I'm normally, I got this joint up, unless you give me super high or something. And then, <laughs> then I'm like, it's yeah, out. it's all coming out. But for the most part, I kind of live with a little bit of, of, of wall. And luckily my wall is hella social. So people feel like, they like, yeah, he, he telling me everything. Yeah, not really. And now I'm just 23. He's still out in the streets. No, nah, he's still yeah. yeah. Are you 23? Yep, I got time. Let yeah, me you see you right quick. Be <laughs> you see me. My you camera. got plenty of time. I'm seeing. No. Wow. My man's is going to, we going to London before Hell anybody yeah. gets uh, <laughs> locked up. We going to London. Track suited up. Yeah. Tape it we up. Yeah. Trip. We got to get but, one last, <laughs> one last hurrah out the way. You know, yeah. you know what's wild too is, um, you know, Kaz was saying that you know, he's never really had that many bad experiences with women. But I, I feel like, and I, I know this is easier said than done. One thing I've been able to do over time, and I wasn't always like this, but I just feel like, and I'm not even saying this is necessarily the case for you, Jim, but there are some people who what makes them so afraid of moving forward is because as how much they've been hurt before. You said what now? I said, this doesn't, I don't know, if, I'm not saying this applies to you, but some people who are afraid of, of marriage and relationship is because they've been hurt so much before. And I, I so, so, so here's what I think of that. Cause I've been hurt too. Like these guys will be able to but tell me I don't that, I, but, but I don't but I don't let that dictate my future though. That I, I don't like that, again I don't like, like I like I said like after I've gotten hurt I've definitely given someone a chance. I fumbled the ball. So it was I, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna sit here like I fumbled the ball. So yeah I know I said, no. I said I didn't say I didn't say it was applying to you, but I'm saying right, 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 right. Yeah, no, I got you. 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 And I think the problem with that is I think operating in fear blocks your blessings. You so right, because I'm not. This that's the thing. You cannot live in fear. You can't, and I'm not. Right, and and that's why I kept asking the question of like, what specifically do you fear? Because you can't live past that fear until you identify what exactly it is. My fear is that same person for the rest of my life. Like, am I going to hey, get you can't tired of that person? person but like, but life. like Nam said, but like Nam said, you know, I think it was Nam, you know, he said, you won't have to do it with some damn body. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you want to do it is, once, you got to do it one person. Yeah, you're going to have to live in fruit with some goddamn body and you just going to have to, you, it's going to always, life's going to be a damn gamble, baby. So that's, that's you, you take you take you you know you take the best damn gamble you you take the one that you've been winning with for Next a while. Bit. Okay, you take that's the one you've been winning. Put it with all in while. and hit max bet. That's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got to do. Yeah, with for sure. Every aspect of life, there's something to be afraid of. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys props here, you Desmond and you Jen. You know what I'm saying? You guys, it takes a lot. Doing something like this, it takes a lot to put yourself out there. Like Nigga, that. I am scared. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Every time. But look, at, but look at, but you should be proud of the fact that you're willing to do it. And you guys even had a crew, like a, a cast change. Y'all had other people on the show last season. Y'all didn't make that stop, y'all. Y'all kept going. Y'all rebranded, y'all retooled, and y'all kept it moving. That takes a lot of strength. It's just like, where? Okay, so, man, where? <laughs> <it's so, laughs> I, I knew I fucking shoot they real. <laughs> so I think that's something you should, I think that's something that all people should look at as far as attributing that to every aspect of your life, whether it's love, whether it's going after your dreams, because you're singing now too. Like, 
you know, you you jumped out the box. He was like, you know what? I'm going to follow my dream of singing. Fuck all that shit. I did. That's I true. did. And just come and, and just kind of doing it a little older. It's scary. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you know what? You know, I'm going to touch some damn body, so I might as well just keep doing it. Like, that's that's just how I look at it at this point. Like, I'm not going to stop exactly. now. I might. Like, I don't know. I already put myself out there. So. Exactly. So, I, ain't got no, I ain't got no choice but keep going with you Exactly. So, exactly. I think I think that's how. Same I'm about a nigga and trying to marry the nigga. Oh, that's different. <laughs> Drawing the connection. Dude. That's, that's so different. Yeah. Different. You know what, though? I ain't going to lie. To me, this, this is the part that's genuinely scary. Marriage can either take you, it can send you over the moon. Like I always get an example on our show. I always talk about Nipsey Hussle and Lauren London or Big Sean and Janae. I, you can see literal changes in these dudes' mentalities when they started to work in tandem with their girls. Um, that's a positive. But you got Lamar Odom too, though. You know, like <laughs> and you got uh, you got they cracked out. Golly. And I ain't gonna lie. I've realized too, like that's the part to me. That's scary. Is that mm-hmm. it can either it can make you great partnering up with the right person can make you great it can literally turn you into something totally different great on the great side it can also turn you into a crackhead by the brains yeah I, I, and yeah. i and Wait a I, minute, a what? I agree crackhead. with it but i this have to disagree crackhead. he did he did say that Why <laughs> But I agree. I, I agree, but I have to disagree solely because of the references you used. And <laughs> in no, and I'm not saying like the witty the whole cracker thing. What I'm saying is the spotlight that they're in. You know, so they have oh, added pressure to the marriage to be a certain way, and then you have all these people around you that kind of don't allow you to be just in an organic marriage. You know what I mean? Like just. Oh. Well, that's true. You, and you, and Jean, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's totally uh, different. But I did live in South Dallas at one point, and there are people who got married and became crackheads. That, that's a real. I ain't gonna put no real names out there, but yeah. this really. Yes. <laughs> but, I was, but I was also. Big shout out to Romine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also want to throw you something else. I'm throwing that too to Desmond's point. You're right about the spotlight, but here's the thing. Because of how much we as regular everyday people put our lives on social media and our relationships, we bring that spotlight to ourselves too. The minute the minute you put your relationship out there, the minute you post this dude or you post this girl. That's why I'll like, post my niggas. No, I think put, it's it, it don't even have to you don't have to even have to post it. Like the minute you talk about your relationship with your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your friend, then there's added pressure on your relationship. And do, especially if you want to be that listen. Mm, okay, I see where you're coming. I ain't listening to him. <laughs> that, that, I say that all the time. I love my mama to right. death, but my mama don't have no. Right, because I was about to say that's on mama. you to shut that down. Like yeah, you have daddy, to create daddy, that boundary. There's a certain level of like sometimes I think we give too much credence to other people. Mm-hmm. Like I do believe in listening to like I would take my mom if my mama came and told me like here's some red flags, watch out for this. I would listen to it. I would take it in, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to have to follow it. It's still up to mm-hmm. me to make the decision, because at the I end of the day, I'm going to sleep with this person. I ain't telling you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I have like one more question, and then we're going to move to the, the word of mouth. Um, so, with marriage being such like a traditional thing and as time progresses like the idea of marriage is changing you know with the times and so even the proposal has changed to where there are women proposing to the men (laughs) but that'll be your response no if a woman asks you to marry her You'll say no. Just off the rip of she's a woman asked you to marry her, you just don't say no. Yes. Yes. The The fact, I'm going to be honest, the fact that she, if if you've been dating me and you thought that was I, I failed. Yeah. I really failed. In my mind, I failed as a man. If you thought that. I ain't putting enough work. Yeah, I didn't put Uh enough work to make you know that I'm not that type of nigga. Now, I do believe there are no rules to this. So, from person to person, like if Jay, I know Jay will agree with me, but if he, if he didn't and he said, you know what, we're in a new age, my girl could propose to me, I wouldn't judge him for that. 
But for me, nah, it's just right. certain types of traditions. I was just about to say. Like, <laughs> what I you can't. say now? I'd laugh. It'd be, it'd be funny. Why would you laugh? Bro? It's a, <laughs> it'd be funny. It's, it's a be beautiful funny. thing that she. Nah, when he, when no, that, it's when not. That picture, no, it's when that not. picture hit Instagram, he's, I see his girl on his knee. Uh, on one knee, bro, I'm dying. <laughs> Nah, Let that handsome ass woman get on the we're, and we're, in this whole, we're in this whole thing, you know, this movement where women are just as equal as the men, blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, that's, the, not, that's, it, not the, that's, that's not why I think it's weird. I just think it, it's just a, you can't twist my arm and tell me you want to marry me. I, I, I don't know. That's just how I feel about ooh. it. I feel like you grabbing me by my ear and say, nigga, hey, it's time. Nah, it's not. It's but not what time. if it was all, it was a conversation? Like, okay, I get that 100%. Dang, if you were unaware I feel, that's what I'm saying. I feel that y'all had reached that point. You know, y'all hadn't mutually reached the point of wanting to be married, right? Get to the point y'all have had the conversation that one mm-hmm. day we will get married and she mm-hmm. just did it before you. I'm Still. a gay man. I mean, so still, basically, it's always still gonna feel the same like, way. Look, so at right, that point, after y'all already had the conversation, you think she's trying to force you to it? Even though y'all didn't, yeah, because okay, so I because I didn't propose. Let's be real here. Let's be all the way real. So we gonna here. keep it traditional. That yeah. I, I I agree with you, Nam. Yeah, because I, I mean, in in my my view on marriage is very traditional. Like even down to how I want my marriage to play out, as far as like uh. Um, let's say I'm, I'm g- exactly general. That's the word I'm looking for. So I wouldn't be okay with you proposing to me because that's not how I want to even start off this relationship. Right. Can, can we, can we be real, real second? Real, real. Come on. Go okay. Ahead. Let's stop acting like there ain't double standards a certain thing. Let's just stop that. Let's stop it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, we gotta, we gotta stop acting like every situation men and women are the same. Now, a lot of situations, like pay scale, men and women should be paid for the same job. I 100 agree to that. Like there are certain things that we should be progressive and making equal for all people. But certain things, women and men don't want it to be the same. Like no, no. Because let's keep it real. Like, we always get that conversation where if somebody was finna break in my house, like they were gonna break in the apartment, and I had a girl over here with me, we are not finna go confront that nigga together. 50-50. That's not gonna happen. We're not gonna do that. At least not in, in, in not in, in my relationship, it wouldn't be that. Now, for somebody else, they might both grab the glocks and go together. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. I don't know, me? Yeah, I'd probably be up in there you with know, you, too. You, you would sure. grab it. I ain't going to lie. You would, but somebody would have to tell you, hey, man, chill out. What, what's, <laughs> like, all that no, equality, uh-uh. <laughs> all, that <laughs> equality, all that equality is going to go out the window. We hear a bump in a room, and I roll over to, to my girl and tell her, hey, you got that, right? Go ahead and get the gun. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. We in it together. We in it together. But I'm mm-hmm. shooting. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't scared. Look, I just nah, but after you like, shoot, you, you definitely gonna just go, in the ba- go in the bathroom like Ebony from Players Club. I'm not afraid. Anything pops off, just shoot at the door. That I hate the- that I'm. I hate that I am that way. But I, I ain't no scared. No, nah, you're not. It's just, you're it's not. just. But I mean, I I do believe <laughs> like to his to his she's, point. She's more, she's more willing to grab the gun than to get married. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, no, I. You gonna catch a case for a nigga, but you won't even get married. That is oh. not. That is not. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not. Dang, you know what? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I respect. Yeah, I got a point. <laughs> look here's the thing man I just feel like now now, like I said everybody it's a case by case basis I I will not say all of it is like this but I feel like if a woman has feels the need to have to propose it's because the man is dragging his feet and he more Mm -hmm. likely don't want and if he dragging his feet girl fuck him I'm gonna be real with you like when I saw the first time I ever saw a woman propose to a man, now granted it was reality TV, but it was Jim Jones's. Uh, oh, woman. Christy. And, and it was because they had been together for over a decade. And, and my thing is, to, he's still trying to with figure Chrissy, it out. Chrissy, she, she should have been left him. You're not, I, you're not finna still trying to be figuring it out with me at 50. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like, yes, I feel like nine times out of 10. What? I feel like nine times out of 10, if a woman feels compelled, to propose to a man is because he's dragging his feet and he probably don't want to marry you. And the th- exactly, and that's the thing, you know, us as women, like you have to see the signs, like if he and and men as well, 
you know, if you if, if you see those signs there, and the thing is, people, men and women, like some of us just are not able to see those signs, and that and that may be because of past experiences, how you grew up, or just kind of your own mindset. Like you just do not see those signs, but I you hope for the most know. of us that we're able to see. Okay, they really not keep it move let me keep it pushing mm-hmm. you know and 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 move that way you know but it's in mm-hmm. the thing let me burst some more people's bubbles let me burst some more people's bubbles we see the signs we just ignore them that is true. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And what I and what I was gonna say is there there's a lot of people because I feel like this generation of people like they have some point of wanting that traditional everything, like even fulfilling the the gender roles. Like there are some that are still there in that mindset of wanting the traditional marriage. Cause there are a lot of females that are still out there that expect the man to take care of them. Um and I'm not you know, taking a that lot of tree. And then there are a lot of men that are still in the mindset of I don't want my wife to work. I just want her to be at home, cook, clean, it's et cetera, et cetera. And then, so at some point in that generation, there was a transition of, I want to be an independent woman. I want my man to have X, Y, Z. And, you know, and so it gets to a point of maybe she's just in a mindset of breaking that tradition of, we've already had the conversation. We reached a point of talking about marriage. We've gotten to that point. And I just want to continue the idea that she's already having in her mind of breaking that tradition of wanting to be an independent woman, still be able to do for herself without a man, and adding a man to this situation, and she just like, I'm gonna break that she mold should, again by proposing to him. I she should get with a dude I mean, that's she, just yeah, as pervasive that, as her, because there's yeah, a dude. Yeah. We not they not on, on this show per se, <laughs> but there are dudes <laughs> out there. There are dudes out there that are not at all like they okay with this. Like, and ma'am, like, yeah, those are the men you stay away from. Yeah. I mean, I'll be real with you. Yeah. 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 You don't care. Don't care what you me. say. I'm not, ladies, I'm, I'm the only woman on this show tonight. Let me tell you something, baby. Don't propose to no damn man. You been no. not. You can't tell if these I, folks what to do. If she yes, want to get I her can. ass on ass on one knee and <laughs> propose to her, oh. <laughs> Let Girl, her do that. If she wants, uh, let no her feel ma'am. handsome for no a ma'am. moment. Let her do that. She probably do it in a pantsuit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Damn, bro. No, 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 no. I'm Women. just saying it gives very masculine no. energy, is what I'm saying. No. That that, that, that one gesture is yeah. very I masculine energy. I forgot I, the, I was the only woman on here tonight. Like, and and, and I'm I gotta start not here with me, girl, because cause cause she get married because I mean hold up. Let me tell you something. You are the freaking prize. And do not get me wrong, men. She's no longer the prize men, at that point. Men, you are she beautiful. Not like that, for our lives. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I hear you. Oh, okay. Men, you are a beautiful addition to our lives. You are a prize as well. But at the same time, I feel like at the end of the day, you, you, I feel like women and men need each other for totally different things. Um, we need you to not necessarily lead, but um, we need you to be that, and whatever that is, y'all can just kind of use your imagination, you know. Um, I, I, <laughs> a leader, <laughs> right? <laughs> what? No, what was I'm, imagine what a leader. And she said, yes. I need you to be. That. I'm not, but the thing is, I get it. You, you walk in that title, <laughs> whatever that one, whatever that it's one thing title. is that you that's don't wanna, what you need them to do. When people say leader, like that, a man is a leader. Automatically, it feels it's like, like it's, it feels like I I get that. So I get it's, why you it's this that thing. Word. It's it's this whole oh he owns you. No, nah. but no, really, really it's really not that. that. Really, but men that. are stronger. Men are stronger. Men are able to. The thing is, women think that Jesus, I don't come on, get it out. Oh, because it's like I, I'm on a fence with a lot of things, and no, people will call you. me. Women will call me pick me or whatever. But the thing is, I love to understand a man. 
Because if I don't understand him, how the hell I'm going to you know, I'm going to That is him. perfect. Just hold that for just a second that women think men are like the, the whole coming together is supposed to be the idea of perfect, the perfect relationship, yes. the perfect man, the perfect idea, oh, yeah. the whole idea of being perfect. So that leads me into our word of mouth. So, and I don't know if y'all follow it. I really didn't follow it until recently, but um, so our word of mouth kind of transitions the, the, the conversation to what's happening currently. So the whole royal family controversy, right? And so I, I listened to the interview and so the whole time I'm sitting there like, you about to marry a prince? Like, what did you expect? Like, did you not sit there? And she, and she said that she didn't follow, you know, royal family and their traditions and all of that and how that situation was. And I didn't either. I but didn't either. And I didn't though. need to, I didn't need to know that. You, but you're not no, married. That's what I'm saying. You're not married. I didn't need to know. I didn't need to know the history of the idea of the British royal family period. I'm not talking specifically about him. I'm just saying the idea of what comes with being marrying a prince. And so even without the knowledge, I knew that there were going to be situations where they probably going to shut you up. You can't talk about when you and yo do get in the fight in the bedroom. Like you're not going to see how here and go and talk to the media about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So there are going to be situations where they're going to control what you can and cannot do. So what, did she expect and and so would you if you were in a situation no, it was, where it was somebody a situation. yeah like if you were in a situation to a female or a man approached you and they have a higher a certain you know higher caliber you know maybe they are a famous person that has to deal with media all day they got a pr person a publicist and all of that so would you do your research on that person to find out like who they really are and the stuff that they really do that we may not necessarily see on camera. Would you take the time to do that? I mean, you could apply that even if they're not, you know, even if they're not royalty or they're not famous. That's very you true. That social media tells a lot. Into how they family operate? How have they? You know, like this is that's worthy of checking out, even if they fucking broke. So if I go into a situation where. The girl is a princess or something like that. That shit sound weird, no. Yeah, yeah. But the girl is like a princess or something. <laughs> then naturally, I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely do my googles. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I know something because that's not a normal situation to walk into. Right. You know what I mean? And then what tripped me out was the fact that she said they pulled up somewhere. I think they was going after you. I don't know where they were, but they pulled up and he was like, "You about to meet your my mom." And she was so surprised because he, I guess they had never had that conversation. And like in the middle of the conversation, he was like, she's the queen. And I would have been like, what? I'm not going in there. So they they all out there. He outside trying to teach her how to curtsy to greet her and stuff like that. Like, bro, put me back in this car for the go. Like, what do you mean? I'm for the meet the queen. Uh Uh-uh, not me. Hey girl, how you doing? I mean, I'm going to do what you I'm all kind of follow your etiquette, but I'm all I know I'm I'm gonna go up in there. What's up? Like it's I, just I mean, go ahead. I just well, it's two things. One, that whole royal family situation, if we're being specific to the Meghan Markle thing, is a little odd because that's one of the most powerful and oldest families in history. Right. You don't think they racist? Ooh, yeah, ooh, oh, 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 that's what I said. That's what I think. You don't you you surprised that there's racism? You surprised that they feel a little like worried that the baby skin gonna be look? Now nah, here's the thing: love is love. We've all been blinded by love before. Well, not all. Now I made it blinded by love yet. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I I get that she fell in love with this man. I get that you know she wanted to hope for the best that she was. He his mama with. though. He his mama. Like he 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 cool. It's just, but it's just now, but now we have to remember, I mean, even when you broke, I, I, I live by this. Love don't solve everything. No. So, yeah, you love this dude, but you got to realize what comes with being with him. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I feel for Megan Markle because that is some wild shit to be thrown into, but that is a decision nah, she chose bro. to make. Nah. Right. Because, I mean, no, would she but- really be with him if he wasn't the prince? Like, would she have been interested in him if he was just some regular dude? 
But like, based on the, maybe, what I just said, as far as maybe, him pulling, they pulling up to wherever they pulled up to and saying that you about to meet my mama, she's the queen. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. it, it, I assume that that conversation was never had. I, I, I mean, but like, he's, he's a whole prick. Okay, he's a whole wait. prick. Yeah, okay, <laughs> what are you give, talking give about? Give me a second. Yeah, okay. Let me, okay. You know who I, I don't, I, I, there is ways for you to not. No, there ain't. <laughs> Bro, you know, you, so. you, you know meet someone at the bar, is. you know who they are. Like, you literally, hey, what's your Instagram? Boom, you know who they are. This nigga name is. I'm, saying that, I'm just saying that's what I assume from her words that she no, I don't spoke think in this interview. And, 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 and wasn't Megan Markle like, she was like, wasn't, no, that was He's like, my bad. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go then. She knew what she I, I, I don't they, okay, okay, okay. Let me say this. So from me seeing the royal family, this I I I, I would have thought they were sweet people. Mm. From from I mean that's from, you that's have hundreds of years of traditions and you know but, a level of, of caliber to but, hold but up from, to but, 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 you oh, can't oh, be damn, like you know cool. what. You know what they did, kind of when 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 Diana and yeah, they didn't like her. They didn't even like her. Oh. <laughs> that's that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what that's what I'm saying. That that's what I'm saying. The the disconnect from them. So you know what? Yeah, okay. But you, and, and the thing is because it's because it's not our it. Well, I don't want to say issues, but because you know we're not from that country or whatever it is. I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Okay. So I'm more into what a what America got going on. So and here's now the thing, that I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking- I, it's, and it's not even like you have to go and Google anything. Like you can just look at TV, not specifically their story, because I didn't follow their storyline or whatever the case may be, but like movies, like TV shows, like they show even though, you know, sometimes they exaggerate it, but they show these types of, you know, stories about how the living is and being in like Buckingham Palace. Like they show stuff like that. There mm-hmm. is not just uh, because they have money and they lead this country, whatever the case may be, that it's all light and love every day. Like we're, they're still human at the end of the day. So there's going to be drama. Yeah, somebody yeah. not going to like somebody. Somebody going to say something inappropriate. It's just broadcasting more on a, on a mass scale because of who they are so i don't understand how she didn't even have an inkling of an idea of what the day-to-day would be like because that's what yeah. she said i i thought about how the long term would be but i didn't think about the day-to-day and and i'm just like how do you not <laughs> see that i was like why are we talking to her Oprah? why are we talking because no, it, it just like i don't whole, understand uh, the why Softball interview, like, like, we we know why we know why they talk to Oprah. Yeah, I'm just saying why it was, was like this interview Jordan necessary? Is what I'm trying to say. Say that again. Because in reality, she obviously was sleep or well, under a rock because they're a white family. They're white. Megan was family. not under a. Mm. No, nah, dog. They're so they're a, a monarchy in in 2021. Like you know what comes oh, with that. Like they it's an like old ass institution. Exactly, bro. They they didn't like Princess Diana was as white as white can get. But she was. Like but she her. was. She was. That's dead. my point. They didn't like her because she was, she was outside dead. of their normal status quo. So if you come right. in and you black, number one, niggas around the world should have an understanding that you're not really gonna be accepted in too many white buildings with open arms. That's just right. the reality. Especially when you're talking about the top. They're not the top one percent. They are the. They the one percent of the one percent. It's so why would you think? Why would you think that they would be? Hey, come on in, Meg. We love you. Like that don't even make sense. That's why I say she would have to be under a rock. Cause this is played out how I thought it would play out. Like if I no, went to go, she uh, wasn't under a rock. She wasn't under a rock. And no. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it at that. Well, all, all we're saying is we know she wasn't under a rock, so, she so she's lying. lying. So, like it's either, nah, I feel bad for my nigga Harry, bro. Lost his whole family about this. But you know what, though? I ain't gonna right. lie to you. Because he, he in the middle of it. He, he probably was sick of that shit. Harry got sold, bro. And, and oh, if you, oh, okay. No, no, no. Y'all seen that meme? Y'all seen that meme where he's doing they... somebody like this? Yeah, nah, he, but he man, was sick of it until he doesn't get the benefits of that financially. And first of all, he's gonna steal ball. That's why somebody said, wait, somebody said that 
uh his mom like had this whole another uh, like a whole different account for him a trust like, or something like that yeah for like 40 million yeah, so, yeah but uh, eventually yeah. that's that's gonna dry up here's the thing too i grew up watching e true e news and yeah yeah like I, so so i retroactively like in passing have followed the royal family to an extent Harry was always over here while they were over here. He was always like partying and fucking with chicks and like drinking right. and doing his thing. He's like, that's why his brother is the one that's poised to be in high position. Not, he was never poised to be in high position. So See, yeah, Harry, always, Harry always moved to the beat of his own drum. So love it. He he had no issue leaving his family and going to Mary Bill. Like, I'm I wish my right. Harry, right. Harry, Harry chilling, man. He tired of eating that bland ass food, being around the board <laughs> ass, soulish ass. I promise you. He so, is. and and I kind of want to ask this kind of one last follow up question. So, now I'm saying that their forty mil going to dry up. You know, if it was a situation, they cut him completely off. Do you think that it's going to be an issue for Megan? Because I think the 40, 40 million, like I That's feel like they good. Like they can't Even I, though I heard, they're going to have to down. But they're still, gonna like, have to. I mean, and even twenty five are still good. They're gonna have to downgrade, right? Yeah. They they're not gonna live that same but lifestyle. I think they'll be okay. So do you think Megan would have a problem? You should say what I'm gonna say. Here's the thing: you realize how many companies are gonna come? Per film companies, podcast companies, books. book companies, more interviews. Say, that that Oprah interview wasn't free. I think I think we know this. Yeah. They're right. gonna be just fine. You realize like how much money the Obamas no have Oprah made? said that <laughs> nobody she wasn't paid to be there. No, no, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure CBS had to pay yeah. to air that hole. That's not case. If they don't have to get paid for this interview, they're gonna get paid that dozens of other places. It don't matter. Exactly. There, there was no lie, no lie. When remember what I was telling you, remember when all of these celebrities you saw Lil Wayne posted up with uh Donald Trump, you saw Pump, uh, Lil Pump posted up with Donald Trump. And I told him immediately, I said, oh, they're getting that check. They have no political... These are dudes who had no political leanings whatsoever. Lil Wayne has never taken a hard stance on anything. Nothing. I knew there was money and opportunity, which now we find out it got him out of jail. Yeah. There's yeah. money and opportunity in being... When Meghan Markle had this story to tell, I promise you, her publicist took this to Us Weekly, took it to Oprah, took it to everybody you can imagine. And whoever bid it the most on that is who got it. Now, they're not going to tell us that because that takes away from the authenticity of the exchange. Like, if we sitting and talking and you found out that I got paid $5 million to tell my story, that takes away from some of the authenticity. But if you feel like I went to Oprah and me and Oprah are good buddies and we're just talking, having a conversation, it makes you feel like this was more genuine. In reality, they're going to make too much money off books. They're going to make... Presidents only make, what, $200,000 to $400,000 a year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Post presidency, they make a shitload of money. Yeah, and I because they're gonna, of... the they're gonna do the same thing. Speaking engagements, they can go to any university right now. Uh, it was Ohio State, I think they paid Snooky from Jersey Shore thirty two thousand. That was for that. Snooky. Yeah. So if they gonna pay Snooky thirty two bands, or they give Jay Z half a million at the time that he went there, trust me, they gonna be speaking at every college. They're going to be speaking in on a dozen shows. They 40, 40 million can run out, but they 40 million ain't the same right. as a rapper's 40 million. Exactly. It doesn't right, not point anywhere. Anyway, now, my so. only point was just that uh, they, at least Harry, he's lived a, a certain lifestyle for a long time. So That's true. when right. you factor in security, housing, all those things, like you got to work your ass off to uh, maintain that lifestyle. Right. I agree with that 100%. And I feel like I can go about the subject of marriage and even their particular situation because after that, watching that interview, I was just like, what? <laughs> I, was, I was so confused the whole time. But I, it, it's just crazy that that whole conversation or the idea of like she didn't know based on what I assume. Maybe mm -hmm. I need to rewatch it because I wasn't actively listening. I was listening. I was just kind of moving around so maybe i misheard her but i'm definitely gonna go back and watch it and Remember, so yeah did you watch the interview amy you didn't not you go ask Janie. <laughs> i mean hey it is what it is <laughs> Shout out but to yeah we're gonna she's keeping my kids this week 
<laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. We we because like I said, I could talk about this all night. And Listen, I, I want to definitely something. appreciate don't, y'all the, for joining us. The don't take it personal cast, we will be here for five hours. I swear. Yeah. I yeah, y'all gonna have to invite me out because I likes to talk. I will talk. <laughs> so, I will we'll be we'll be here after the show ends. Yeah, we definitely gonna have to collab. Y'all we'll can come back, probably come back on the show one day, but for everybody that's you know, watching again. So, so we have a we have a we we do we have a policy here. If someone is gracious enough to have us on their show, we gotta bring them on ours. So it's only a matter of time before y'all come on ours, and then we have like three, four hour long conversations. So yeah. Yeah. this is I a recorded wait. conversation. Oh, I've been waiting. Oh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold y'all to that. No, I've been waiting. Oh, I know she is for sure. sure, sure. <laughs> but um, so I want to make sure that everybody just watching. I want to thank y'all again for tuning in to another episode of Mouthful. So make sure much. that you are following us on all of our social medias if you're not doing so already. Make sure you follow their them and their podcast as well. Um, and make sure you guys tune in next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, where we'll have our small business owner, Keandra, with Cupcake Sweets. So y'all make sure y'all tune in for that. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our mailing list um, so you can get exclusive updates. Um, getting notified of all, you know, all the updates of our content and everything that we're doing, because we have a event once a month that we call true session so this month we're doing a virtual pop-up shop so make sure you guys if you are a vendor or if you're even just a buyer you just want to come out and support black owned businesses make sure that you are going to our website mouthful-tv.com to see all the upcoming events and everything that's going on with mouthful so make sure you guys tune in for that and that's pretty much it for me send us an email if you want to be a vendor let me do that mouthful at novative ent.com n-o-v-a-t-i-v-e ent.com um where we send you all the information on what it takes to be a vendor because it ain't just no i sell eyelashes and i only got like two pair i want to hop on and get rid of these last two pair of eyelashes it's none of that make sure you are a legit situation That was real messy. I I just had to say this. I love it. (laughs) The emails they coming in and they just like, oh, yikes! But but even though, but even those, I'm I'm just saying you have to start somewhere. But you know what I'm saying, like for this, we just need you to. But no, but I'm saying, how can we? Why why would we buy your two pairs of eyelashes over somebody that got (laughs) fifteen to a pair? You know what? I still love it. But I'm gonna leave it alone. Right? I'm gonna leave that because oh, now it right? sound negative. If it don't sound good, now it's just coming out. All yeah. this is telling me, all this is telling me is that Desmond has been through some shit dealing with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a photographer, so yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> But we also have got approved for our clubhouse, y'all. Um, so make sure that we are going to start doing a follow up on clubhouse hey. at, immediately after the show. It's a whole after party situation every Wednesday immediately after the show. So make sure you follow us on clubhouse and come join the conversation. We appreciate everyone again. We appreciate y'all for joining. We'll be seeing each other. Thank you. We had so much fun. Thank you so much for having us. All of you guys. I really enjoyed you. Thank I you. did too. We had fun. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Bye, y'all. See you.